Hi guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how to rewire original three-phase motor to be used from a single-phase supply which you can find everywhere and most of the houses doesn't have three phases going to it and if your shop doesn't have any and you have a motor and you have an application for it and you want to use it but you don't want to pay for, to essentially for a three-phase distribution Here's a way for you. Let's go to explanations first. So originally, to run this asynchronous motor, which is essentially a squirrel with a squirrel cage rotor, there are three engines inside, and in, uh, to be used from a string phase supply, they are connected in so-called Y configuration, or sometimes it's called star configuration. And these circles being the lugs, as you can see on the motor, ignore this central lug because that's just you there to hold this cover. So originally the setup looked like this. There was a bar shocking these three lugs together, and these three lugs were used to feed your three phases in. Now to be used from a single phase supply, you need to wire the windings, rewire the scene from a star configuration to a delta or a triangle. And you will need a capacitor, that's necessary. I don't know about your motor, but this motor and a couple of other motors that I came across on the internet when I searched pictures and videos have exactly the same pinout, if you will. So all of them, I think they are standardized, but be careful. Yet, uh, power it from a protected outlet, as always. All motors that I've seen essentially have such configuration that for a three-phase supply, they have a bar shot in this three together or this three together. And for a single supply, you need to short this one with this one, this one with this one, and this one with this one. That's what this picture is for. Then you can feed your live and neutral to any of the two. You can pick these two, you can pick this one and this one, or this one and this one. Then you will have third, third lug connected to nothing essentially. That's where you need to connect a capacitor. Connect a capacitor one leg to this lug. Then other leg you can connect to either neutral or live. It doesn't matter. It makes the motor spin anyway. But it does change its rotation. For example, when you want to spin the motor clockwise, if you want so for rotor to be spinning clockwise from uh, this spindle side, from this pulley side you, for, you let's say want to hook it to neutral but when you want to your the rotor to spin counterclockwise all you do is you just move this capacitor from the neutral to the live and you will change the rotation by doing that the amount of capacitance that you will need you can either understand that uh, Calculate that by using formulas, or you can go and experiment with it. Start with lower capacitance, and essentially, if you have too low capacitance, the motor won't start on itself. It will require you to go and spin it first. So right now I have this capacitor bank, which is four microfarad each in parallel so 8 microfarads total for 500 volt rated each again so and they are film caps it's necessary for them to be film caps better yet they should be the classified as a motor run capacitors so that's essentially what i have is i have two of them in series oh in parallel excuse me four microfarads each And it spins nicely. As I mentioned, uh, all you need to do to reverse the rotation 
is to unhook this end and hook it to a live, for example, and you will change the rotation from counterclockwise to clockwise or vice versa. So let's give you some demonstration. Now this motor particular one, as you can see, it's in Russian, but you may understand few things on the way. You can see what this says is essentially in Russian that will be двигатель коротко замкнутый, and that means that essentially a squirrel cage rotor motor, something like that. I can see the type and numbers, and you see on this label that it states that it can be connected in triangle and Y configuration as well to a 50 hertz supply has a power of 270 watts has a rotation speed of 2800 rpms can be part of uh, for a star or for a triangle configuration it should be part of, of 220 volts 50 hertz supply for a Y configuration 380 volts 50 hertz and it consumes 1.2 amps in triangle configuration and 0.7 amps in a star configuration has a power factor of a 0.86 which is not that shabby considering that it's an inductive load and efficiency of 69 percent and yeah enough of a ramble let's connect it up not the best way to connect it with a jumper lead and stuff like that but you'll see that it will run just fine currently when i first wired it up it was spinning counterclockwise from this side and i needed it to spin clockwise so all i did is i essentially used this lug and this lug for a mains feeding and then had a capacitor from this lug to from a central lug to this lug so to reverse that i essentially put because I soldered two wires to one lug, you can see here, to one connector. I put the mains here and here, and capacitor from remained one side here, and I moved out a, as a connection to the out, to the rightmost lug. And now it spins clockwise. Now, the capacitors that I use are slightly small for this size of the motor, and sometimes it depends on time that you plug the thing in, sometimes it won't start on itself. Why is it so? Let me explain for you, to you, real quick. Essentially, we all know, at least we all engineers know, that our power in the outlets are sine wave. And you can plug the thing in at different moments of time, and sometimes you can plug it in when the voltage is here and you'll get a peak and you'll get a nice burst of current through the discharge capacitor which is gonna essentially discharge capacitor when you connect it to a voltage source will be a short for uh, some period of time it will appear as a short circuit because it will have very low impedance when it's discharged when it's dis discharged but you can also plug it in when the voltage is low or better yet when it crosses zero then you'll have a voltage slowly rising and the capacitor will charge up slowly and won't provide the nice burst of current necessary to start the motor up when you have insufficient capacitance there is a formula which looks something like this 70 which is a constant times the motor power in a kilowatts equals to capacitance which you need to have in microfarads now for this motor it comes out to be 18.9 microfarads or something like that and as you can see i'm using eight so it's a lot less so sometimes it won't start if you connect it up if you are lucky enough to connect when the voltage crosses zero then it won't start maybe i will be able to show you here but I can't be sure, I have no way of controlling this. Okay, plug it in. See, it doesn't spin. Now, 
plugging in again <coughs> plugging in again that's interesting okay the rotor is not turning I'm a lucky bastard let me tell you I'm a perfect zero voltage crossing switch something like that you kidding me? <coughs> That's funny. Let me check the wiring a bit. So it came out that we have a low voltage in the outlet. So right now something is sagging it down. Maybe it's a water heater which is next door. It's not too much of a load, just 1.2 kilowatts, but still we have a pretty reserve, you know, low power. So, anyway, if it doesn't start and you have insufficient capacitance, all you need to do is just to give it a spin by hand. And it runs nicely, so it's like... Ah, there's a decent power still. You can see it's running clockwise. And if you do, sometimes it starts without spin. But <laughs> right now it doesn't. That's low voltage. As I mentioned, low voltage not enough of a current burst when the capacitor is discharged, so the thing won't start sometimes. But you can fix that by adding more capacitance, as you can see again, yet again. I'm using 8 microfarads instead of this 18, or better yet, like 20 microfarads, to 10 in parallel. So it doesn't want to spin sometimes. It depends on the moment that you plug it in, and depends on your mains, which in my case are kind of weak right now. Yesterday I tried it. And it spin counterclockwise, and it was starting each time I plug it in without me spinning the rotor by hand. But now it's some for some reason just doesn't want to. Anyway, let's try right now. Maybe it will. Ah, you son of a whatever. We have a low supply I just measured it uh, two minutes ago with my multimeter and yet that came out to uh, 215 volts which is normally we should have 230 volts so that's kind of low and capacitor is low so yet again I hope you learned something from this video where I rambled for way too long you can patch a lot more information into a shorter video but I just can't speak any faster otherwise my speech will be even more horrifying for especially for native speakers anyway thanks for watching see ya